Welcome back to Freedom Garage, and by popular demand, we are going to do a review on this 2019 Tesla Model 3. This is the long range version, and it is the dual motor version, which makes it an all wheel drive. Now, the dual motors provide 346 horsepower and 389 foot pounds of torque. And being the long range variant, it provides an estimate of 310 miles per charge. Now, Tesla. If you're not a Tesla owner or not familiar with electronic vehicles, electric vehicles, uh, they recommend, Tesla does, a 90% state of charge for your daily driving. And if you're gonna go on a trip, then you can bump it up to 100. And that's to minimize battery, battery degradation over time. Now, of course, those numbers are for the 2019 version. And so far as Tesla's uh, technology for batteries has increased, so has the ranges. And I'll refer you to the Tesla Model S Plaid video I did where the range in that vehicle is much more than this particular one here. Now, if you have been following the channel, you'll recall that this is a loaner vehicle from Tesla because my Tesla Model S Plaid is already in the shop and I had only owned it for about two and a half weeks before I uh, had to bring it in. Um, so people wanted to see a review of the Model 3. I will do a quick walk around show you some of the things on the inside of the vehicle. It is very different than the Model S. So if you saw that video, you'll probably have some interest in this because this was Tesla's entry level or more affordable uh, compact sedan that they hit the market with. And then we'll take it for a ride and come back for a final review. So here is the Tesla Model 3. You can see the uh, specific styling. You know this is a Tesla as soon as you see it uh, from the trademark very front flat of a front facing nose which gets a ton of bugs on the highway uh, to the distinct styling of the Tesla with the uh, side cameras in the front fender as well as the cameras in the B pillar. Lots of cameras in a Tesla which help you with the full self driving or the uh, enhanced autopilot. Now these wheel covers uh, from Tesla increase the range and efficiency. Okay, looking on the inside, this is all uh, vegan leather. And here are your window controls, as well as your door release. You push that and it will automatically, uh, electronically open the door. In the event that you do lose power, this is your fail safe. You pull that latch up and it will uh, manually unlock the door. A quick look inside before we hop in. There's your front seat. You can see extremely minimalist, a very clean uh, design where there is not a lot to, uh, I guess, catch your eye. All right, so inside the vehicle, again, the dash, usually there's one of two schools for people. It is either a very clean, uh, very uh, minimalist, kind of futuristic look. And for other people, it's a very bare, very boring, cheap look. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this. And as you can see, there are a lot of similarities from the Model S, but it's very, very different as well. So we'll start with the dash here. The dash is just a flat panel. Uh, and then here in the gap, these are your vents. They are all hidden in Teslas. And then you have a, uh, a strip of uh, laminate wood. And then that's pretty much it until you get to the center of the dash here. And this is the screen where everything is controlled in this vehicle. Now, if you have seen my Model S Plaid review, you will notice the difference here is you have an actual steering wheel. Whereas in the new versions of the Model S, you don't have a wheel. You have the yoke. Uh, and then you also do have two stocks, one on either side here. Uh, this is your transmission. It also will control adaptive cruise control as well as turn on and off uh, autopilot and or full self-driving if you have that and this button here on the side will put you in park and if you press and hold it it will put you into uh, your parking it'll engage your parking brake now here on the left you have this stock which is for your windshield wipers and washer fluid your high low beam as well as your turn signals your steering wheel on the tesla model 3 is very minimalist you have an actual horn here which was one of my gripes on the uh, Model S Plaid. And you have two uh, multi-function uh, wheels here. They can scroll up or down. 
and click uh, left and right as well as in and out. The one on the left here is strictly uh, dedicated to audio. The one on the right here, if you click it left or right, will adjust your following distance on your adaptive, uh, your cruise control there, how far the car will trail the vehicle in front of you. If you scroll up or down, it will adjust your uh, speed for your cruise control or what uh, setting you're at. And you can click it in and out and that'll turn on your, uh, your voice commands. Now the screen on the Model 3 does exactly everything that the Model S does. All the Teslas are very, very similar. One part that's different for the Model 3, here on the left-hand side, you have the vehicle. Uh, you can lock your doors with a simple press of the button, the press of that little lock. You can open the frunk, you can open the trunk, as well as your charging port. The remainder of the screen is for your GPS navigation, all of your controls, uh, adjusting your mirrors or your steering wheel. Uh, everything you can control in a car is based off of this screen here, including your glove box, which I can't stand that. I wish there was an external uh, way to open your glove box instead of navigating through menus. But you can adjust your pedals and steering, check on your charge state, your autopilot settings, uh, your lock settings, I'm sorry, your lights. Uh, just, you can change everything on the car through here as well as check your uh, current software version. It'll tell you if there's an update. It also gives you uh, everything you need to know about the vehicle, whether you have autopilot, what your mileage is. And under the service tab, something that's key for all Tesla owners is car wash mode, because uh, some people struggle with putting these in neutral. Uh, ask me how I know. And then you can see navigation, previous trips and all that stuff are all controlled there as well. And then of course your mapping software. And you can change your uh, navigation from your basic mapping and routing style or to satellite view as well. So it's whatever you prefer. Okay, also to the right side of your, uh, your map, you have your compass so you can set what is north as you're looking at your, your screen. You have uh, to turn on satellite mode. This is to turn on live traffic. Uh, this option will pull up uh, points of interest and this will bring up Tesla chargers uh, should you need one on your route. Plus your car can automatically route you to a charger should you need it. Uh, which is the good thing about the Tesla uh, navigation as a whole. If you use the navigation, it'll route you to where you need to go. And if you need to charge, the car will tell you and it'll route you right to a charger somewhere on your route. And if you're taking a long trip, it'll route you to as many chargers as it's needed to get you to your destination. Uh, continuing on the interior here, you can see it's a pretty clean, minimalist interior. The seats are comfortable. Uh, they the headrests are not adjustable. They don't go up and down on the Model 3, which I've always wondered why. Uh, and they, for some people, if you look at the profile, for some people that's a, a little bit of an aggressive angle on the headrest. Again, this is a loaner car, so they have limited the speed, uh, speed limit of the vehicle to 85, which you'll see that when we drive probably. Uh, this is for your cell phones. You can charge them here. They also have, for the 3, it's an option that you can purchase uh, through Tesla or uh, through a third party, we can do the induction charging or Qi charging. Now the trim on this Tesla is obviously the black laminate look, and this is one of your storage uh, compartments. It is very, very deep, uh, and they also have a, an optional shelf that you can purchase that'll go here for storage. It's a uh, third party. Uh, and then back here you have your cup holders. Now moving back, it's an armrest here, typical armrest. When you lift it up, you do have uh, a little bit of storage here. You have a removable uh, storage cubby, which reveals a cavernous storage area uh, that you can put more stuff in as well. One other thing I want to mention here in the front storage part is the cell phone area pops up and underneath here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it well, but there are two USB ports here. This is where you would plug in your, uh, your phone cord, your charging cord, or your a Qi charger cord, and it's also a spot where you can plug in a USB drive so that you can save the camera footage around the vehicle with all the cameras. You can use what's called sentry mode, and it's like 24 hour surveillance of your vehicle. Tesla also does have a trim panel that will uh, cover your cell phones, uh, your cell phone area. So if you want to make it look just sleek and minimalist, you can do that as well. Now we'll look at the back seat from our vantage point. You can see there it is a five seater. Now, one thing I will point out as a Model 3 previous owner is this sunroof. It's gorgeous. It's all 
glass with the exception of this bar here it's very very gets hot in here quick uh, to the point where they sell uh, like uh, diffusing shades that you can clip in here because it gets extremely hot in the summertime again this is a loaner vehicle and it wasn't cleaned before i took it but uh, we'll open the frunk and i'll show you that and we'll open the trunk and i'll show you that and you can see it'll show you visually that they are open and uh, let's push the button open the door and check them out so let's check out the frunk Hey, this is this is pretty much it. Uh, not a ton of storage here, but uh, if I can get out of the shadow for you, you can easily fit a case of water, a bottled water up here. Uh, Carry-on luggage fits here, excellent. I've used it numerous times going to the airport. There is a button to open it if you happen to be trapped inside, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let's. Go around the vehicle and check out the trunk. On the way to the trunk, this is your charging port area on a Tesla. To open it, uh, you can do a couple things. You can click a button on the charger uh, itself, or you can just press the bottom of the port. That'll open it, or you can also use the button on the screen inside the vehicle. So there's multiple ways to open that. And then the trunk, like I told you, it looked like somebody did some lawn work before the person before me, but ton of room inside here. A ton of room. I'm 6'1". My arms, I can't even reach the back without leaning into the trunk. And of course, those uh, rear seats will, will drop as well and give you a ton of cargo space. Also, this all Teslas have this little uh, sub trunk. And inside that bag is uh, your charging cables for a 120 volt outlet. Now, I got a lot of questions about charging Teslas and how I do it and, and uh, which way I would recommend. So let's show you, this is, actually this doesn't come with the cars anymore. This is now an option, but they used to come with all the cars. And this is a plug. This part goes in to the Tesla itself. And this is the button you push to open the charging port. And this is the uh, three prong adapter that comes with the car for your usual household outlets. They do sell different adapters so you can get what works best for you. All right, before we go for the ride in the Tesla Model 3, I will, I forgot to show you up above here. Uh, these are your typical uh, sunshades. They do have mirrors with lighting. Um, your map lights here, turn on and off with just a press. This is your hazard. And here is what some people are calling the hidden camera, but that is the cabin camera in a Tesla. You have to opt in in order for this footage to be available to Tesla uh, regularly. Uh, and I opt out always because that has the ability to do, see if you're paying attention to the road. And of course, in a crash, this is all able to be retrieved via subpoena. Uh, and Tesla assures owners that they don't use facial recognition so they wouldn't be able to tell who was nodding off or whatever um, should that come up I guess in, in, in a crash but let's check this little bad Larry out and uh, hit the road so Tesla gives you these cards as your key as well as the Tesla app on your phone so the second I hit the brake in order to try to shift into drive you're gonna see the car will actually uh, tell me I need to use the key so this is the card you place it uh, just behind the cup holder there and we're able to shift into drive and might as well show you that while we hear uh, shifting into drive is just a tap down. Shifting in reverse is a tap up. Neutral, which some people have a difficulty with, is halfway up. There you go. And then to park, you press the button. You can hear the brakes engage electronically. And then press and hold is to go into the parking brake. All right, so again, I mentioned that it is speed limited to 85 miles an hour being a loner. I guess Tesla doesn't want people to beat on it or hit the zero to 60 time or zero to 100 times. Zero to 60 on this version, the again, it's a dual motor, all wheel drive, long range, Model 3. And uh, zero to 60 is 4.4 seconds. The top speed is limited to 145 miles per hour. And uh, it is a peppy car. I mean, if you think of some of the you know, sports cars for sale, 4.4 seconds, zero to 60 is uh, pretty respectable. 
Now, as you can hear, it's extremely quiet inside the cabin of the Model 3 of all Teslas or all electric vehicles because there is no internal combustion engine uh, roaring either in front of you or behind you. Now, one thing uh, was a question that I got about Teslas is how do they accelerate while they're, you know, obviously in, in motion? And you can see here, they move pretty quick, pretty fast. Electric vehicles, it's all of the torque instantly. There is no uh, ramp curve. It is just all it has immediately. Which adds to uh, the lure of an electric vehicle. I mean, when you are moving these things in some some nice tight turns, it feels like you are literally driving a roller coaster. Now you can see there's a ton of room above my head here in the Tesla, but again, I'm six foot one uh, and I'm not leaning all the way, you, know, you can recline the seat back, obviously. A ton of room in here, extremely comfortable for the driver as well as the passengers, and uh, very, very quiet. I wanna show you here, when I hit the turn signal, you're gonna see the blind spot camera turns on automatically, which is a pretty cool feature. Now we'll stop real quick to show you the rest of the uh, controls here. This is your HVAC. Uh, one thing about Teslas is th they do have some options that you have to buy kind of like software. Uh, for instance, your heated seats. They are all available here on this one because it's a loaner but these you have to pay for and they're unlocked via software update uh, from Tesla, which is kind of cool and kind of weird at the same time. You would think maybe someone could figure out how to turn it on, I guess. But front and rear HVAC heated, in, uh, heated seats only in the Model 3. The Model S does have cooled seats. Okay, other options here on the screen, you have your telephone controls, uh, your streaming, you have your sentry mode, this is all your cameras. You can see uh, that's behind us. So that you, you can use that as your virtual rear view mirror and your left blind spot and your right blind spot. Here are all your apps. You can move your apps around, but uh, very similar to the Model S review that I did if you were interested in more information. But the key part is if you're parked, you can, uh, you can entertain yourself. You can watch Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, or watch Tesla tutorials. Uh, that's the theater mode. In arcade mode, they have a bunch of different uh, video games that you can play while you're seated. The other cool part is the browser. Tesla has a browser built into their car. Uh, you can go online, you can go to any website, uh, and it brings up a virtual keyboard. It's not the fastest in the world because Tesla's modems are not 5G yet. So uh, you, depending on your service, uh, your signal will depend on obviously how quick this will go. You can see here, it's not the snappiest. All right now I'm gonna show you um, autopilot and full self-driving. So if I push the right stock down once, it's gonna set my cruise control. If I set it, if I push it down twice, now the car is gonna take over steering. It'll constantly uh, keep the vehicle centered between the two lines. And I strongly recommend you keep your hand on the wheel and Tesla tells you that too, in case you need to take over immediately. But you can uh, control your speed again with the dial on the right. You can control your follow speed again. You can have the car inch closer or give us more space depending on your personal comfort level. And if you use navigation on autopilot, literally you can put in an address and it'll drive you all the way there and even take the exits for you and drive on local streets. It'll come to stops at stop signs for you. It'll come to stop lights for you. Uh, you will hear about every 45 to 50 seconds because the, uh, the car will start to require an input. As you can see, I just, I've done it a few times. I don't know if you've picked up on it. And this is all you really gotta do. You just gotta let the car know that you are uh, awake, number one, uh, and in control, technically, number two. Okay, so you can see here it says, apply slight turning force, and it's blinking blue. Now it'll blink blue to a certain point, and now it goes faster. It's requiring my input. Now I'm going to take over right now and, and give it input. If you don't give it input, from what Tesla tells me, because I've never let it run that long, is that the vehicle will pull over 
it'll stop itself and it will dial 911 again from what the Tesla salesman told me. So there you have it, the 2019 Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor version, again, all wheel drive. Now, will it fit everybody's uh, likes? No, because of that minimalistic interior that we detailed earlier. But if you are somebody who can uh, stand an electronic vehicle and not go through range anxiety and not need to hear a high horsepower motor, uh, which I understand some people absolutely uh, can't get over that. Uh, this is a fantastic option, uh, both in the price, although the prices have come up because of inflation, uh, but if you're looking to get into an EV, the Tesla Model 3 is a very affordable starting point if you are looking to go that route. So thank you all so much for your time. Please let me know what you think about the vehicle down below, and please subscribe to Freedom Garage, where I will continue to bring you some of the coolest, fastest cars around. And until we see each other again, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.